Hello and welcome everyone to another weekly market commentary from StashAway. Of course, with us, our Chief Investment Officer, Freddie Lim. Freddie, how are you? Howdy, everyone. Um, you know, uh, good start to the week. And uh, again, still early in the year. Uh, I just want to say again, Happy New Year to all, all, all of our listeners who's been tuning in. Yeah. And we, we, we've hit a small milestone, Freddie. We just hit 3,000 subscribers on this channel. So thank you, everyone, um, for always being there and always asking great questions and listening to us. Um, if you've not done so, please do hit that subscribe button and you won't miss any of the next market commentaries when they go out. So you get a notification every time. So please do hit the subscribe button so you get more of our market commentary. Freddie, that's a good milestone, right? It's a good start. Um, let's go for another zero. Exactly. Uh, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. But uh, we do have a lot to discuss. Uh, obviously, um, you know, the pinnacle of all the political talk from last year, over the last year, year and a half almost, right? Um, end of a presidential era is coming up on us today. Uh, we, as we are recording this on a Wednesday, we will have the inauguration of uh, Joe Biden uh, what do you see happening? Um, you know, any update you want to give us uh, in relation to that? Well, uh, I, in our inauguration, as in all other inaugurations in the past, um, it, it's, a, it's a ceremony. It, it, it signals the end of an era. And this one is particularly more meaningful uh, than in the past because of all the chaos that we have seen in the last four years. So um, I think for international investors, it's a sign of relief to welcome a less mercurial um, uh, president of the United States. So um, I think the European Union would be very happy as well because uh, the US under Biden is already signaling a desire to return to the Paris Accord for climate change. So there's just a lot of, um, a lot of uh, it's not excitement, but it's just a lot of relief. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> and I, I think hopefully yeah, we'll, we'll see, you know, the U.S. Uh, from their best side again over the next four years. So with that being said, um, the first few um, positions in Joe Biden's new cabinet are being um, going through Senate hearings already, right? Uh, yesterday, uh, on Tuesday this week, we had um, Janet Yellen's confirmation hearing. Um, and that's obviously a very important one when it comes to the financial world, right? Uh, what did you get out of that um, hearing? Where do you think she stands? Was the market surprised uh, or is everything, uh, you know, just as you expected? Uh, firstly, um, maybe some of us may not know who Janet Yellen is, but I was super relieved that uh, she was the chosen one um, because she has great central banking experience. She used to be uh, the, the head governor for the Fed and... Um, uh, and also have been uh, uh, have many years of uh, managing uh, monetary policies in the U.S. And she understood the difference between monetary policy and, and foreign exchange uh, intervention. So although in the speech, she somewhat started with uh, a stance that you know, the U.S. should remain firm on China's trade practices, the U.S. will continue to see China as a strategic com competitor, but for people who knew her for years with her central banking years, we know that she, she knows the difference between um, intervening in the currency as a manipulator uh, or as a central banking policy. So that actually you got to read between the lines. So for someone like myself who, who, who's, who's watching her before, um, I felt like investors uh, should not listen too literally to her speech. Um, she is a very level-headed person. Yeah. And that will hopefully help the markets as well. Um, another topic we wanted to discuss because it's been coming up to us quite a bit, right, Freddie? I think you got a lot of questions about it. I always get questions about it. Uh, we already had some questions during the last few market commentaries about it. People were worried about, you know, um, Alibaba uh, with Jack Ma being, you know, kind of like fell off the face of the earth, so to speak, for a little bit. Um, and, you know, obviously we have um, KWEB as an ETF, which holds um, also um, Alibaba as a company. So there's always that questioning, hey, what happens now to Alibaba if Jack Ma is just gone? But you have some news, right? Well, uh, he reappeared um, giving a, a speech or slash video presentation to teachers in the rural areas. 
So it's almost like a congregation of uh, ruler, ruler teachers. He was a teacher himself before. So it's a very philanthropic stuff. Uh, during that conference, he mentioned that as a firm himself and as a firm, they're just going to focus more on philanthropy and education. <laughs> it's a far cry from the previous ambition, of course. So uh, uh, you can read between the lines. But it didn't matter really for Stash Away because uh, even when it was um, down about 20 percentage point from September 30th to even the beginning of this year, and KWEB, the ETF that we have, invested about 9 plus percent in Alibaba. It went down to 7.5 percent of that ETFs being in it because it dropped. It didn't matter because uh, KWB was up 16 percentage point in the same period while Alibaba is down 20. So again, I just wanted to, to demonstrate the power of uh, intelligent diversification. Um, and and th this is a pretty classic example. Yeah, it really shows that, um, you know, diversification, not just, you know, this is just in one ETF, but also in your portfolio when you have multiple ETFs. Yeah. On how we have a lot more ETFs and asset classes across all the portfolios. And th this is even smaller than, than that for the impact on the one ETF, for sure. Yeah, no, exactly. Well, Freddie, hey, then let's wrap up the market news uh, and go into questions because we did get a couple of questions from last week uh, and we want to, uh, you know, touch on those. For anyone that's new, uh, if you want to ask any questions to Freddie and myself, please feel free to always put them in the comment section below. If you listen to us as a podcast, feel free to send us uh, a message to support at stashaway.sg. Um, Freddie, first question, Ian Wong. Uh, Ian says, I'm new to investments in Stash Ray. So first of all, thank you for joining us. Uh, really appreciate it. Welcome aboard. The person, he said, I'm not even sure how to ask questions regarding investment, but let me try. Um, I'm comfortable with the Stash Ray risk. It fits my risk level. My question, though, is, have you ever considered flexible allocation between China and U.S. equities in general or high risk index? Um, well, first of all, thanks for trying, uh, Ian. And uh, there's never such thing as a dumb question because all questions are, if it's a concern to you as an investor, it is a legitimate question. So thank you for trying. Um, firstly, yes, um, just as an intro, Stashway's algorithm actually looks at a lot of ETFs, actually beyond what you're investing in your account. There's, there's a universe of, uh, uh, of ETFs that we look at that the algorithm, ERAA, uh, would choose from. So it, it would flexibly move in and out of certain things, not based on the whims and fancies of me, but based on the signals that we get in the algorithm, based on economic trends, economic data, based on uh, the valuation of asset classes versus the fair value, all dimensions of, uh, of uh, information is being considered by the algorithm. That's very difficult for a human being to process, um, but only the machine can optimize it. So it is flexible. Uh, and yes, we do have higher risk uh, portfolios. Uh, as you know, um, we call our risk level the statutory risk indices. Um, anything more than 22% are in the high risk category. We have the highest risk at 36% SRI, which means that there's a 1% chance of losing 36% of the money. Uh, this is still a lot safer than the standard equity markets and, and it, it does return at a better profile. Uh, but again, we call that a high-risk uh, portfolio. It is there. Um, but uh, again, I will caution going to the high-risk without a proper financial planning first. Uh, so, but it is available on our platform. Yeah, and especially also, Ian, if you're, you know, you, you're mentioning you're new to the investment scene and stuff, uh, I think uh, maybe start off with some of the lower ones that you're, you're probably already um, at right now. Uh, okay, Freddie, uh, next question, Ritz M is asking, Hi, Stash Ray. When do you think the data will start to show specific trends to move out of the all-weather strategy you've mentioned before? Uh, second half of 21 or even later than that? Well, as usual, thank you, Ritz. Um, it's always been uh, uh, great receiving your questions and you, and thank you for particip participating. Um, we are seeing improvement in economic data. So it's dictated by economic data and the rate of change. It's not dictated by any human beings. Uh, what in terms of me interpreting the signals that we see now is that things are improve a lot, but it's sort of a situation of become from becoming less and less negative than before. It's not actually growing, and so we had this weird period in 2021 when we're waiting for the vaccines to be shot in our arms. Uh, there's still this period where we need to manage 
the, the mutation, the current wave of infections. We also need to have more government support to tie things over until we really get to the finishing line. So again, um, we, the, the data, this is what the data is saying. And risk management should always be preemptive rather than reactive. So we remain in all weather strategy until the data tells us otherwise. Great. Um, for everyone else, that's it with questions for today. But we do have a few upcoming webinars, as always, uh, over the next few weeks. And what we have planned for next week is actually three different ones for the three different regions we're in right now. For Singapore, if you want to join us to learn more about our income portfolio, we have an Ask Me Anything session on Thursday, the 28th of January. It's from 7 to 8.30. Again, link is in the um, description below, as well as on our website. Um, in Malaysia, we have a live webinar on investing basics. So if you want to learn more about investments and how to structure your portfolios, you can join us on Wednesday, the 27th of January from 6 to 7 p.m. Um, you can do that, uh, again, show notes link below as well as on our website. And for our MENA region, Stashway MENA, ask me anything. So if you have any questions ever about Stashway, you want to learn about how we custody assets, how we invest, how the app works, Anything is possible. Um, join us also on the 27th of January, 6 to 7 p.m. Gold Standard Time. Um, again, description is in the uh, show notes. Um, they has the links as well as on our website to sign up for this. And we hope to see a lot of you on all those three webinars um, and ask away with any questions during that time. And if not, again, also put them in the show notes uh, in the comment section below this video or send us an email to support at stashway.com so that we can pick those up and uh, you know, Freddie will happily answer them over the next couple of weeks. Other than that, I'm sure we'll be with you again in a week's time. Freddie, until then. Until then, till next week. Bye-bye. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to get notified whenever we have new content out for you. Also, don't forget to download the StashAway app. It's available in the Apple App Store as well as the Google Play Store. So you can start on your financial journey right now.